Cool. How's it going? So we have, who do we have here today? Yo, yo, yo. Uh, it's me. I am Tung. Back here, back in action on this wonderful podcast with the beautiful, handsome, full of head and hair, Dylan. <laughs> you'll be there. You'll be there one day soon, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I wanted to I wanted to get you on here and and ask you some questions. I mean, obviously, it's been a crazy big year for uh, your favorite camera system, Fujifilm, right? It's been a, a wild year, and you've touched, I feel like, every single piece of new hardware. Um, so I want to get your thoughts on that. And then also, you know, I want to highlight some of the work that you've done. Um, I'll I'll split in some images here of some of the some of the amazing photos that you've taken that you've shared online of some of the portrait work you've done, some of the lifestyle stuff, and just incredible stuff. So I want to hear a little bit from you on that but first I kind of want to start with look the reality is we're getting pretty close to the end of a what you know what is really an unbelievable year for Fujifilm right um, I'm a big fan of Fujifilm been a user of them for um, close to a decade here um, this has been probably in my experience the most exciting year right we have the X-H2 we have the X-H2S and in many ways those those two bodies have you know, in my opinion, revolutionized the, the X-Series system right they've given it new life so GFX aside Having used both of those cameras, and recently I've seen that you've gotten your hands and grubby fingers all over the X-T5, you know, what are your thoughts on where the system is in 2022 um, right now as we get close to the end of the year? Um, well, thanks for having me on your show, Dylan. I appreciate that. And uh, and saying all those wonderful things about me. Uh, it's really, re I really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, in terms of cameras in 2022 where the Fujifilm stands. I think Fujifilm filled out filled out all its gaps. Like you got one for video, you got one for the high res, and then you got the mid-range, which is the X-T5. And that's more for the photography side that doesn't want to do the video, but still wants that high resolution sensor. And it's been really great because now Fujifilm it's Fujifilm pushed all these cameras just right in time for Christmas. So uh, hopefully they're, they're going to get some sales out of this. It's, it's a lot to choose from, too. A lot of people are like very indecisive right now. I've seen my YouTube comments go up and they're just like, what should I get? I don't know what to get. I'm very undecided, decisive. So um, it's a good I guess it's a good time to be a Fuji user if you're looking to buy a camera. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think you make a good point there, right? Like the indecisiveness. Yeah. And, you know, from the business perspective, I'm sure, you know, we've got some really smart people in the top over there in Japan, and they know what they're doing, right? Putting out multiple bodies gets people excited versus one body like, oh, it's not for me right now. You truly have something for everybody. Um, so, you know, in terms of those three um, you know, autofocus has become a huge point of contention, right? I'm sure you're seeing yeah. a lot of that in the comments. And, um, you know, you and I frequent the Facebook groups, which are kind of cringy at times, <laughs> right? But they're also there's some there's some folks on there who who have some great work. And I, it, for, for me, I don't know about you, for me, it's a little <laughs> motivating, right? Seeing seeing good stuff. And then you're always coming out, sharing your photos. So it's always really motivating. But something I'm seeing a big point of contention is autofocus, right? Um, ton of camera enthusiasts are like, look, autofocus for me is number one, when in reality, it's probably not. Um, but you know, we collectively as these Fujifilm fans or users, or even just camera users can't decide. And we cannot agree whether Fujifilm is close to where maybe Sony and Canon are. I mean, certainly I think the consensus is that they've surpassed Nikon for the most part, all things considered, you know, having used, you've used everything, man. You've used the H2S, you've used the T5, you used the H2. Having used everything, what are your thoughts here and, and what conclusion? And also, I know you have a Sony a7 IV, so where are you at in terms of autofocus? Um, in terms of autofocus for photography, I think it's uh, pretty good. It's really, it's up there. I would say it's third um, behind Canon and Sony. I, I feel like... Um, in terms of for what I do, uh, like which is portraits, I find that it nails focuses all the time. I did uh, two tests with uh, my wife Hillary, and I think for the Fujifilm X-H2S, when you're shooting at 40 frames per second, the the hit rate is is at like 80 percent. But then just the amount of seconds, just the amount of photos they take is what you should be surprised about, like. Like 80% of like 
150 shots is a lot more than 90% of, or 90, like, 99% of 20 shots, which uh, a Sony a7 IV can uh, max out on. So that's that's where you have to, you're gonna have to like look at that as as the scale to um, for autofocusing and for people wanting to know. Yeah, Fujifilm is up there, but in terms of video, I still think that it's a little finicky. It's a little undecisive. But um, as a creator, you're 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 supposed you're supposed to know how to work around it. It, it is annoying to look at, but uh, when I uh, uh, record or film B-roll and stuff, you're not going to see that in my shots. You're only going to see the good parts. You're never going to see like the, the jerkiness of the autofocusing, but it's there. <laughs> An interesting thing, right? I've seen that on video where I have a 16 month old daughter and trying to take video of her, it'll, you know, randomly lose her and this and that. But considering that, you know, other camera bodies may do the same thing. Like my my wife yeah. has a uh, Sony uh, a7 III and even Sony Whoa. a7 III, very similar. Yeah, we're, it's a very split household, right? <laughs> why? What happened there? <laughs> why didn't why didn't you push her to, uh, onto the Fuji? She, I, you know, I've tried. I, I've given her the bodies and just like, no, I, I need my uh, I need my Sony UI and menus. Enjoy that. Have fun. Wow. <laughs> but, but, you know, even on that camera, it will lose in the same instance. Yes. So yes. I, I, I guess my point is, and you kind of touched on this, it's not fair for people to say, well, you know, um, Sony is is 100% and, and Fujifilm is yeah. 90% because it's different, right? In, right? in photography, yes, you know, Fujifilm is definitely there. I would agree with you in video. Maybe Sony is a little bit ahead. But it's not light years ahead and it's still those are things that you're going to notice if you're sitting on YouTube watching side by side comparisons. But in real use, as you said, when you work around these issues, you're not going to show those clips. You're going to get those clips that, that are that are locked on. So, um, you know, there was a video by by Manny Ortiz recently where he's he's selling the Z9. It was this funny thing. He's like, I'm quitting um, uh, uh, Nikon. And I think he's a great photographer and he's someone who's like self-taught and just just does it the way he wants to do it. And I have a lot of respect for that. Um, and he was saying that the consistency of the AF is terrible, right? Um, and so Fujifilm users have said this for a long time, you know, like it's inconsistent, et cetera. But we've got this new generation of sensors. We've got the X-Trans 5 HS and the X-Trans 5 HR. Um, and, and and people are still saying there's some inconsistency there. So do you think all manufacturers are inconsistent? Do you think Sony and Canon are 100% perfect? Or is this just something, as you alluded to, where, you know, people that are making content have to work around this? Um. You know what? I can only speak for what I use, and which is like Fujifilm and a little bit of Sony. Um, I think uh, for the people that are viewing the content creators' content, right? The people that are viewing uh, these YouTube videos out there, they they are the one that likes to nitpick because I feel that they just want the best value out there right so they're going to have to see like which is good and then like like this is people's hard-earned money right so they just want to be able to squeeze as much value out of it as they can and i guess this is where we get like you know these people that are unsatisfied uh with some of the test things that we do or like you know stuff like that right so uh I think it's all up to the the person uh, behind the camera, the the person using it. Again, I'm always gonna like there. There's a lot of user error in um, in in uh, what I do as well because I I'll, I'll, I'll let people know right now that um, the testings that I do they're not freaking like scientific at all. I'm not like Gerald Undone. I'm not gonna sit there and then like plan everything out. Everything. It's just gonna be boom, 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 let's go. And then, you know, I, I film autofocusing tests outside where the lights changes, and then I have to switch to a different camera. And then that camera's, uh, the lighting on for that camera is gonna be shit and stuff like that. So there's a lot of moving factors, but um, so yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's probably um, at the end, it's the person who owns that camera. They just want people who are looking to buy that camera, they just want. Um, to get the best value of their money. But there's, I, yeah. No, yeah, no you, you, you bring up a good point because it's like, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're focused on, hey, if I'm gonna spend $1,700, $2,500 on an H2S, right? I wanna make sure that I'm getting most for it. But I, I, I think I agree with you, you know, you're, you're gonna have an amazing camera. And now if you sit there and watch the side-by-sides, 
maybe not. So, I mean, yeah. I guess that kind of is a nice segue into my next question, which I'm going to be very brutal with here with you, but what, I mean, you've, you've documented your journey, man, from, um, I think it's at one point, maybe you still have it, the ZVE 10 or the ZVE one, or I don't yeah. even remember. Uh, and again, here in America, we say Z and everybody else says Z. So we're, we're a Z <laughs> place, so excuse yeah. me. Um, but you know, you, you've gone to Sony, you've gone to Fuji, and then it just seems like, man, when, when you're doing videos on Fujifilm cameras and some of the images that you're putting out, they can speak to, you're enjoying it, man. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're having a good time. So here's my question, Ann. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. What the hell keeps bringing you back to Fujifilm? Is it the images or is it the views on your YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no. You know, I've been, I've been shooting with Fujifilm since the X-T2's release. So it's probably been about like six years going on seven. So I, I've been shooting with Fujifilm way before I had this YouTube channel. Um, I've just been really passionate about uh, Fujifilm as a camera because I really like their colors first and foremost. Like, um, I don't know if you know the story, but when I, when I started picking up photography, I started with a like Canon Rebel. And then um, mirrorless, mirrorless cameras were just being introduced into the market, so they're still People, at that time, people are still debating the mirrorless DSLR kind of thing. And then I hopped on to a Sony A6300 and I was like, yes, mirrorless is the future, da 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 da. And then I just realized that like when I was editing my photos, it never looked kind of right to me. Even though I was a noob back then, I kind of saw that these colors were off a little. So, um, Funny story is uh, in Australia, I traded my laptop to um, to this guy, a brand new laptop. He's like, hey, do you want to trade for a Ricoh GR2? I knew nothing about the Ricoh. I just said yes, um, which I found out later. It's a very good camera. It's a very good pocketable camera, right? And then I realized uh, taking images with that camera was such a fun experience because the colors were just right. The colors just speaks to me. And then um, I was looking at my Sony. I'm like, what the fuck? Can I, I, I'm, just, I'm sorry. What the hell? What the hell is this Sony doing here with these uh, stupid shitty ass colors? And then, um, and then I messaged him again. I'm like, Hey, listen, I really love the, the colors on the GR. Is there any other camera that you can recommend that has similar colors? And then he recommended me the Fuji, and that's that's how I got started. And uh, from there, it's just been it's just been so good since because I like even though I still shoot with Sony for like you know uh, right now it's just a video camera and maybe like big time clients stuff. But other than that, like I don't I the the colors are all right. It's not as good as Fuji. Fuji film. Every time I see a shot taken with a Fuji, I just get like really really excited <laughs> with. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's like me, me too. I mean, I, I certainly feel the same, you know, the, the, the colors are, are insane. And, you know, I could probably wax poetic about the colors, but I would say a, I think a lot of us harken back to the days of, you know, looking at photography from from the earlier days. And there's a very filmic vibe to it. And this has been beat up on a million times. But yeah. I, I, I think the colors are so uh, warm and inviting and, and, and special that it makes you come back. So you certainly have a love for the cameras. And I think more than that, you obviously have a love for the, the images. Cause like I said, some of the work you're doing, some of the portrait work, uh, some of the models stuff that you've done is just unbelievable. I know you got the Voigtlander 23 recently and um, some of the stuff that you've done on there has been fantastic. So with all that said, what do you prefer the most right now? You've got your hands on all three cameras at some point you've touched them, you feel them. You, I remember you ran through a parking lot doing um, um, an autofocus test. You were down a hallway doing autofocus tests. Yeah. Like you were running these cameras <laughs> through the gamut and your comments and the folks that, that love what you do and enjoy your, your videos and wait for the, I love you at the end. Those folks were saying, Hey, you know, what, what do you like the best? So, so what's the answer? XT5, XH2 or XH2S. You only have enough money for one. What do you do? Man. Um, I, I'm, I just, I guess I'm just fortunate enough that I have all these cameras to play with. And I've, I guess I've been fortunate enough to build up a YouTube channel where it's uh, big enough to be on Fuji's radar for them to allow me to, uh, for them to allow to send me stuff, right? Like the X-T5. So uh, I really duly, truly appreciate that. But if you guys, if, if, if I only have enough money for one, I think it would, it would be an X-T5. I, I've started with an X-T2, so 
picking one up would just you know reignite what I love about the Fujifilm camera and um, I'm not gonna explain any further I'll just say an X-T2 it's just it's just a little bit of uh, it has a little bit of everything for everyone yeah agreed yeah and I think the I haven't got my hands on one yet but I, I know the size is is really special um, mm -hmm. you know me personally I have the got an xh2 here and then i've and an xh2s and i've got an xh2s um yeah you know and the reason is um and I'll, I'll touch on this in a little bit but you know i i think if you're doing paid work and you need two mm -hmm. bodies quickly to shoot um i had got rid of my uh xt3 for the xh2 and nice. um upgraded to it and i was really thinking you know am i going to go xh or <laughs> xt5 but you know i during the shoot as a funny story i was so used to my xh2s that when i switched my xt3 i had the um, ISO dial kick over to 12,800 and I wasn't paying attention. And, you know, the, the clients are talking to you and I'm taking photos and you know how it is. I mean, you've been on a beach in the middle of golden hour, like not wanting to stare at your settings. You have this model in front of you. Um, and I ended up taking everything at 12,800 and really screwed up with the images on that camera. So it, you, you really do get used to the PCM dial on here. So, and, and that's mm -hmm. something I'll touch on here in a moment, but, um, if I had to choose, I certainly, I probably would do XH2S if budget wasn't an issue. I think mm -hmm. if budget is an issue, um, I, I would actually recommend the XH2 unless you're a diehard for the dials, which I get. I love the dials too. I just, I've, I've kind of changed my ways. So for the work that you're doing right now, and you're doing some incredible work, I can't stop saying this. I mean, not only am I a fan of yours, but I think everyone that sees your images on the Facebook groups, you do a really good job sharing. Um, I don't, I haven't seen you on the Reddit Fujifilm group, so we got to get you on there because um, there's some really, really talented folks on there too, doing a lot of like very filmic stuff. So after this, remind me, I'll get you on the, on the Reddit groups because I think your work would go over really well there. Um, you know, you've done a lot of great stuff on YouTube. Your videos are getting views because the talented images that you're putting out. Um, I, I know the one at golden hour of the, of the girl in Portugal was just incredible. So you've oh, done some you. amazing stuff, man. Um, and here's the kicker. It doesn't matter what lens you use me. I mean, when I'm using the 56 1.2, I'm putting out great stuff, right? Cause it's mm -hmm. an unbelievable lens. You're using third party lenses. You're using all sorts of stuff, putting out high level attainable work that is really publishable. So for all the stuff that you're doing in your opinion, tongue, what lens, I mean, I'm talking third party, first party, and we talked about this, what brings you the most joy and happiness and blows you away every time you use it? So what, what lens is that one for you? Um, then anything that is the nifty 50, I would say, um, I just feel very comfortable with that, uh, focal length. So I'll shoot anything you give me. Uh, I have, <laughs> so I, you, you saw how many reviews I did out there with the 35 millimeter focal length, right? So I got the seven artisan focal length, um, seven artisan lens review. I got the Mitocon. I got the, the Lawa Argus. Then I got the XF 33 millimeter. So I shoot a lot with, uh, around with this focal length. And, uh, that's what I really enjoy the most. I just think that it's, uh, enough. Uh, enough compression, but not too tight, and it just allows me to operate and just move around freely as I'm looking for uh, composition and angles to a photograph. But uh, out of out of all those lenses I tried, I keep going back to the XF 33 millimeter f1.4 just because. Um, yeah, baby, <laughs> it's a very it's a very special lens. It's a super reliable lens. I. I said that in my last review, review of that lens is that uh, you can't beat rel reliability. Um, as much as I love the XF 35 millimeter f1.4, it's just too slow for what I do. Like the images is, are great, but um, I'll sacrifice a little bit of that magic for the XF 33 millimeter f1.4 for the autofocusing reliability and the weather sealing and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you and I could sit here for an hour and talk about the differences between the 35 and the 33 and how, you know, I, I think you just touched on it without going into it, you know, the 33 yeah. still retains and I, and this is again, debatable. I get it. Mm -hmm. Still retains some of the magic. We keep talking about the magic as Fujifilm users of the 35, but I think the 33, and I, I talked about this in a video I did on the 33 um, where it's it still got some of that stuff. Right. And the reliability, you mentioned that the linear motor, right. The weather mm -hmm. resistance. I mean, these are things that you have to have nowadays if you want to be efficient and quick. Now, if I've got an X Pro One, you know, and, and I'm going slow and I'm I've got four hours and I don't have any kids and I don't have a job, 
Sure, right? You can take your time. But with the 33, if you're doing paid work, if you've got someone who's impatient in front of the camera, you got to go, right? So having yes, those exactly. linear motor and those things, and like you said, the reliability, I, I think is key. Um, and, so and, um, go ahead. I, sorry. I, yeah, I, I respect people's time a lot. So whenever I shoot, I'm always thinking about uh, the person in front of me and what they have to do afterwards. I don't want to waste any time. And um, that again, that this is where um, the XF35 will fall a little bit short because then you have, you're, you're going to have to ask to do retakes or redo. And I just don't have time for that. So me, I'm just efficient. I'm, I'm trying to be as fast and as clinical and, you know, just go in there and then just get out with some bangers. And they might ask you, say, Tongue, man, I thought you were a pro. What's going on here? You're telling me you exactly. to reshoot this? You're like, well, I, that, it doesn't have a linear motor. And they're like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, yeah. listen, we're in the middle of November. We're getting close to the end of the year. Right. Um, biggest surprise of the year from Fujifilm for you. What, what surprised you? I mean, obviously, the rumors had leaked most of the stuff that we see uh, we saw come out. But once you got your hands on it, what surprises you the most? Um, I think the X-T5 uh, surprised me the most because... Um, um, I think with the XH2S and XH2, I kind of knew what I was getting into because, you know, they divided that up with like the, the, the dual, the stack sensor and then the high resolution. But uh, the X-T5 was uh, one that I'm just like, okay, like they put all these specs in the XH2, uh, the XH2 and the S. What, what's gonna, what are they going to put in the X-T5 that's going to make it compelling for, you know, photographers, for like anybody in looking for that mid-range price, like social media creators, uh, content creators and all that. And uh, for its price, I think that's like the best value. You're still getting a little bit of everything, not to the degree of the X-H line, but it's still better than a lot of... Um, like a, a lot of cameras out there in that same price range, I feel. You got like the 40 megapixels, you got the 6.2K, uh, you got the 10-bit recording, and then I think you can also do ProRes and in internal, but that's that's a video that's that's a video thing. Um, I got a lot of people in the comment section said, this is a photography camera, you should speak about video. <laughs> but- I'm Gonna film a video or two of their family watch, guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But um, we just live in a social media uh, content creators world, right? So uh, I think it, through that lens that I'm viewing at, it's like it's one of the bigger surprises for me. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I'm blown away. I had I, I remember I was talking with someone, and I, I I trust me, I get it. Facebook is a lame, stupid place, but you know th these groups are actually fun, engaging things. And you, know, you, <laughs> you spent most of the year earlier this year very famously saying. Uh, xh2 and 2s are going to be full frame cameras and, and you were the ultimate troll and it was amazing <laughs> right but i but, uh, but i think now that now that 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 has passed you know i, I think yeah. I, I was even telling people i said i really don't see them coming out with the xt5 this year you know the rumors weren't mm -hmm. there Fu fuji rumors and patrick runs a really incredible site over there really works his tail off um had said hey i think it's coming 2023 and all of a sudden got news that hey it's actually coming november right? yeah. so we were all kind of blown away and then you know you were actually I don't know if you know this, but you know I, I try to watch YouTube pretty quick, uh, pretty closely. But you're one of the first folks out there to get your hands on it. That wasn't this, you know, 500k subscriber channel. You were one of the smaller channels that first to get your hands on it. So kudos to you. And I and I think that, as you said, I think that speaks to the level of work you're doing and the level of analysis you're doing. And yeah, you're not doing this technical, clinical brick wall analysis, but you're doing like, Hey, here's some shots. I took, here's my wife on a scooter, right. In yeah. Portugal, here's what the autofocus is doing. And I think that is what us users want to see. We want to look at that stuff before. I don't really care about dynamic range graphs, right? I don't really care about sharpness bar graphs. Uh, I'm a smart guy, you know, I, but I don't care about that stuff. So yeah. I, I think you've done really good there. Um, you know, I, I want to transition into talking about paid work, right? And I think this is something that a lot of people, um, are, are, you know, with all this gear, right? I mean, I've got, I mean, really, when you think about it, in my hands, there, there's, there's, you know, I don't know, 6,000, 7,000 US dollars of, of gear in my hands, Ooh, right? Boy. It's a lot of money, right? Oh but my goodness. Got to get <laughs> your me. back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and like you said, like, I'm fortunate enough to, to have that, but I'm also, you know, really pushing into paid work, right? I would love to yeah. do more and more of it. And in the past couple of months, I've done quite a bit of it. Um, and it's fun, you know, it's not, enthralling like i have more fun talking to you i have more fun doing youtube videos right that's where the passion is but let's be honest there is a lot of paid work opportunity out there so 
Um, you know, where do you see enthusiasts really people that are watching your videos saying, Hey, you know, tongues, show me what the, what gear to get you. Show me what lenses work. The 33 has got that reliability. And as you mentioned, I got to be conscious of people's time. If I'm getting into paid work, you know, um, is, is that something that, that you would recommend to people? And then, you know, what would you recommend to people who have gear and not getting into paid work? Where are you kind of at when it comes to, to being paid for some of the work you're doing? Um, well, when it comes to, um, paid work, um, I, when I, when I first started photography, I made the, I started as a, like a travel landscape photographer. I don't know if you know that. Uh, uh, so I love taking pictures of like the places I travel to. Uh, but then I realized that once I was heading back home to Toronto, that there's not going to be much landscapes there. So I decided to pivot and I decided to uh, shoot portraits because I knew that if you shoot humans, you're going to get paid from other humans. <laughs> so that's what I would recommend is um, for anyone uh, wanting to get paid work, start shooting portraits, uh, start doing them for free, you know, build out your portfolio, start sharing them on social media, because even the, even if it, even if it gets like one like or no likes, like people are watching in the background, like, um, like you, sir, Dylan, I did not know that you were watching me until you made that connection. Right. So I appreciate that because uh, like, you know, every time I post these photos on like, you know, Facebook, I really don't know who the people are. I'm, I'm just posting it out there uh, just to get eyes. Right. And then it's 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 not until like, you know, you post consistently, you get better. You show people that, you know, you're improving as a photographer, that people are going to start noticing you and start reaching out to you. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I 100 percent agree. I think doing portraits for free. I think, you know, I, I know you're in Portugal right now, but uh, I actually, my, my full-time job, I'm in the staffing world and a big part of recruiting and staffing is really LinkedIn, right? So mm -hmm. getting a nice LinkedIn photo, building a nice profile. I mean, folks that have, if you have this nice camera or you even have an X-T2 or an X-T1 or even mm -hmm. X-T30, whatever camera you have, go tell someone, I'm going to take LinkedIn photos of you because your LinkedIn sucks, right? Get people excited for that kind of stuff. Um, I just did uh, a guy in LA, um, I did his dating profile photos. Right. And it was such a funny oh, yeah. thing. He's like, he's like, Dylan, man, I loved your work. Right. And, and first of all, when people tell you that, right, it's always flattering, but he's like, you know, I need dating profile photos. And I'm like, well, you don't really need an XH2S and a 3314 to do dating profile no. photos, but came out awesome. Right. And, and the speed and reliability of the autofocus and, and some of the colors we were able to get out of the sensor. I mean, it really makes it special. And he was able to recommend me to a couple of his friends. And that's really how you can get paid for your work. And I've already reimbursed the camera through that, right? So that's that's super, amazing. Super exciting. Um, amazing. I, I want to go back to you. I, I want to I, I want to point out here. I mean, you, you haven't talked too much about this, and and I I think it's worth spending a couple minutes on. Look, let's be honest. You you've you've chronicled a little bit of this journey, but you're a world traveler at this point, right? I'm over <laughs> here in Orange County, California, sitting here, um, not not in a terrible place, but not able to yeah. go to the places that you are. Um, you're, so you're, you're traveling the world at this point, you have some really strong feelings, um, and you're very vocal about that, which I love. I love the honesty, man. Cause most people are like, oh, it's okay. Um, on different cities, countries, areas. So now that you've, you've been a few places, I know you spent some time in Hawaii, obviously from Toronto, and now you're out in Portugal, which is obviously a dream for a lot of folks. What's your favorite place kind of objectively? And, and why would you say that's your favorite? Oh man, it's, it's kind of hard, man, because, um, each place uh, brings a totally different vibe to, um, you know, just bring a totally different vibe. Uh, but, um, it's hard to say which one's my favorite, but I'll tell you which one I like. I, I do like Hawaii because, you know, we're by the water, we're by the ocean. Uh, the people are lovely. The food is great. Uh, the, the island was Oahu. So Honolulu area, um, stayed around there beautiful place um and i like i like singapore because um when i was walking around it just looks so futuristic do you, you see the architecture around the city it's just like amazing it's awestruck uh, and the food there is great too um i love sydney for the for the harbor bridge and the opera house that view is just one of the best views that i've ever seen and um, the food there is also, yeah, <laughs> a photographer's dream. But I'm always, uh, but I, I, I was going to say that there's a connection between the cities that I really like uh, to, 
that I really like visiting all have like good food places. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Hawaii has good food joints, uh, Singapore, and so does Sydney. They're, they all have incredible uh, food and um, incredible views uh, to just, you know, take travel photography. And I, yeah. I'm sure you have a whiteboard somewhere in your room of ideas coming up, but I think I speak for everybody on the food note where we would love to see because you and you've dabbled a little into this i i don't i know maybe it hasn't got the success you want it to have gotten but certainly it's you're you're a really great on-camera personality and i think some of the oh. vlog stuff that you've done it would be really cool and not to not to give you ideas here but it'd be really cool to see uh kind of a food vlog of of portugal because i know that there's some special places there and for you to kind of go around and speak to some of the food you like um, with some Fujifilm gear and kind of test it mm -hmm. out in the field. I think that would be really cool. So hopefully looking forward to that. And when that video drops, I'll, I'll be on the comments saying, uh, love this stuff. So that's awesome. <laughs> so um, I won't take up too much of your time. We're already at about half an hour here. I know you're a busy man. Wow, it's, really? It's, yeah, we, quick. We, we've been having some fun here. Um, I, I kind of want to close it on, on a point here. So Look, I mean, I, I, you, I, I've been flattering you most of this time. And I mean, it. I mean, you're very, you're a very incredible talent behind the camera. Um, you, you've done BTS stuff. You've shown kind of your process. Um, you know, you're, you're known for your photography at this point, whether you, whether you want to be humble enough to, to admit it or not. I mean, for God's sakes, you have a, a mural in uh, of one of your photos. And what city was that? Someone painted one of your photos? Yeah, that was in um, Norway, somewhere in Norway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which doing at the Toronto Neon place was just incredible, right? It's I I, I think I, I, I'm a big Flickr user. I've posted videos on why I think Flickr is incredible. Um, I've seen your stuff on Flickr get reposted, you know, like really I, I, I've I've seen it no. you know, everywhere. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. And if you Google search neon image, I think uh, you know, that that girl with the glasses shows up quite yeah. a bit. So this is this is timeless stuff, That's right? Crazy. This is this is flattering, <laughs> great stuff, but you know, you're, you're talking about photos and you're talking about videos and photography and videography respectively. What other areas of tech are you super interested in? I just did a, a, a video on the uh, Apple watch ultra and a, uh, a Garmin epics. And I'm a big fan of Garmin. I'm wearing an Enduro two right now. I love their watches. I mean, they're expensive as hell, but they're, they're fun products. What, what other areas of tech are you interested in and kind of what's this next year look like for you? I know you're, you're, you're focusing on this and growing the channel and the channel is, is definitely growing. Yeah, you had a record year in 2022. I mean, I, I think some of the stuff you put out was was awesome um, and really special. But where do you see the channel going and what other areas of tech do you kind of want to touch on? Oh, man. Um, first off, I would like to say that I did not know my images are on Flickr because I don't use Flickr. So that's that that's kind of weird. <laughs> so that, that's kind of cool to, to see. Um, but in terms of like other techs that I'm other tech that I'm interested in, I um uh, I love watching MKBHD, Mar Marquez Brownlee. Um, I I like I like watching MacBooks reviews. I, I like to see what uh, what machine is out there, because you know as a content creator now, and as a content creator, and now that we can edit 8K videos, it's gonna be a lot more demanding for your computer. So I'm always on the lookout for what. Is going to make my life a little bit smoother, not not give me um, much headaches and stress when it comes to a video video editing. So I'm always looking for like computers, laptops, and um, hard drives and whatever whatever it is that. And everything has to be fast. <laughs> it has to be the latest and greatest. It has to be fast. It has to you know just just works and works seamlessly. And um, that's what I like. Uh, and maybe headphones. I I'm a uh, I don't know if you notice. I don't know if you remember, but I said that I used to dabble in music production. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I like making house music, EDM music, uh, EDM. So I want. Yeah, it is, but it's like so. I can I can give you a link or something for you guys to check out. Like I. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That works. Um, but uh, where was that? Yeah, so I like uh, looking at review, looking at reviews on headphones as well, just to hear the, the different sound and stuff like that. And uh, before I wasn't a big audio guy, but because of like music production, I've become like so into headphones. <laughs> With all that 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 
interest that you have and obviously background, like where, where do you see your channel expanding to? Are, are we sticking to photography and videography, which yeah. you're very good at and there's still a lot of room for growth there, but do you want to dabble into some other stuff? What's kind of your plan? Uh, right now, I, my plan is just to see the, the channel grow at a consistent rate. Uh, right now, it's just focused on photography because what I like to do is to show my process and show you show you my images, right? But uh, in doing so, um, what it is that I do is I like to inspire people to say, hey, look, listen, this is the shot that I took with this, this type of camera. Uh, and for anyone that owns that camera, you guys have that same potential to make images like me. Uh, and that's what I really like and enjoy doing. And I just love photography overall, like, um, it just so happens that uh, Fujifilm meshes well with my my vision and stuff like that. But I, I always say this, like, give me a camera and I'll try to shoot whatever I can. I just like going out there and documenting things. So for now, it's just the, the channel is just going to be focused on photography, maybe a little bit of my life if I uh, if there's a little more interest to it. I tried that during Hawaii and I didn't get much. Uh, much traction. So, <laughs> uh, say, man, I would say give it another shot. I think Portugal is a great place and to show more yeah. of that. I know you did an XH1 kind of walk around photo walk with your wife, and that was super yeah. cool in Portugal because the, oh. you know, again, sitting here in California, I'm like looking at the architecture you're talking about. I'm like, I've never seen any of this stuff, right? So, <laughs> to share that with your fans and folks that like Fujifilm, I think you get great results. I, I want to speak before we go, I want to speak a little bit on your process. Um, I, I think, and I speak for most people that have seen your videos. Um, you know, I, I like to think I'm a Lightroom expert. I like to think there's nothing else I can learn. Um, I know that Lightroom has come out with some incredible features that I'm using every day. Like the auto masking AI stuff is un fucking believable. Like mm -hmm. it's so crazy and so futuristic. Um, I grew up in San Jose, California, and one of my friends still works at Adobe. Um, he's on the wow. Photoshop team and um, just, just hearing from him, like, you know, crazy things are coming. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it drops and I'm like blown away. Right. So really, really cool stuff coming. I, I, I want to go back to a video that you did of your editing process. And I remember, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like a pretty short video. It was like three to five minutes. And it was, it wasn't super long. Like some of these Lightroom videos, like if I did a Lightroom video, it's going to be three hours long, right? <laughs> um, you were able to show an editing process for a photo in a really digestible, easy to understand way. And your result uh, was was incredible. I think it was a photo of your wife, I believe, that you most recently did. And it was fun. And I, I learned something out of it. And I'm like, man, I thought oh. I knew everything, right? So some of the masking that you do, some of the, the techniques that you do with some of the linear filters and the and the radio filters and all these kinds of different masks and different sliders that you're, you, you like to do. I, I think a lot of people on YouTube, and you can probably relate to this, will say, okay, I'm going to edit a little bit of exposure here. I'm going to do a little bit of this. That's all fine. But showing what's going through your mind and showing what image you're trying to get. And because you have a very distinctive style, um, it's a very, if, if I were to describe it, uh, it's a very filmic, but, but, you know, very timeless style where it doesn't, it's not overly saturated. <laughs> or it's not overly unsaturated. It, it's just wow. right. Um, okay. My stuff, you know, I, I tend to make my skies really, really blue and really make things that in 20 years, I don't think it's going to look that great, but your stuff is really soft and, and does a really good job. So is there more in the future? Can, can we expect more Lightroom, not tutorials, but behind the scenes, like, Hey, I've got eight images from this shoot today that I love sit with me and edit these and, and kind of see my process. Or do you still want to keep a little bit of that behind closed doors? Uh, no, I'm well, first off, thank you very much for saying that my style is very timeless. That's a very that's a word that I've never used to never heard of to describe my style before. So I appreciate that. Um, and second, I would say that your style is timeless as well. So when people look back, they're gonna be like, oh, yeah, you know, this might be shot on a film or something like that. So don't don't, don't beat yourself down like that, Dylan. Like, <laughs> uh, but uh for in terms of the editing, I would also like to say thanks for saying that, you know, it's a very digestible, um, it's very digestible and people can learn from it because I feel that I am not as well articulate and as well eloquent when it comes to my words. Uh, so um, I appreciate you saying that too, because that makes me feel good and gives me confidence to actually uh, put more effort into this kind of videos and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and second, yeah, f with Lightroom tutorials, there's a lot of demands for it. But then when I do it, no one watches it. <laughs> they, 
Yeah, they say they say they want to watch it, and I don't see them in the comments.、Um, but it's one of those things that I do want to do more of. It's just the interest needs to be there,、um, and if there's anything that people want to learn, I I will happily oblige. I think. I think one person said, "Hey, can you do more cinematic videos?、Uh, cine- more cinematic edit videos." And then the next day, I did an edit, and then it came out a few days after that. So I do oblige. It just、um, once you get the request, you're ready to provide. Yeah, 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 exactly. And、um, yeah, like there's gonna be more. It's just people need to ask about <laughs> ask for it. Yeah. So much Porsche work, and again, I'm I'm giving you all these suggestions, and you don't have to、yeah. do them. But I I think going over some of the new Lightroom features that they're they're amazing, but they're not perfect. And you have so many images of models and of of human faces that to to see really is this stuff really working? Because you know if you if you sort it down by lips, hair, teeth, I'm getting some mixed results on some stuff. So maybe to show how how you work around that would be great. But people、okay. love that stuff, and I know the views aren't there, but I'll I'll certainly give you a shout out on my very small <laughs> platform too. So. Yeah, tell me. I'm gonna wrap it up, man.、Um, anything yeah, man. you want to plug? Anything you want to close with? Anything that、uh, is on top of your mind? Oh man, Dylan, thanks for thanks for having me. I appreciate you.、Uh, I appreciate you、uh, sending the invite out to this because not 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 too often that I get to just sit and just chill and just speak、uh, photography, speak gear, and just speak、uh, about art.、Uh, so I do appreciate that, man, because、uh, this is totally different from what I usually do. I'm usually by myself, just、uh, away, just cooking,、uh, just cooking.、Uh, so so yeah, I appreciate that, man.、Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Th- thanks for coming. And and it's it's eight o'clock in the morning here. I know it's four、yep. o'clock, almost five o'clock in、uh, Portugal. So thanks for taking the time in your afternoon.、Um, we'll do this again. We'll we'll, yep, we'll maybe、sure. look at some images next time. And during this video, I want to cut in some of your work so folks can see it. But、um, okay. let's do this again. And、uh, I appreciate you coming, man. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate、right. you. Take care. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye.